So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a cinematic look in the most efficient way possible. So this footage is shot with Red Gemini and we're in log currently. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a color space transform to convert this from log to Cineon so we can apply a film print emulation that is available inside DaVinci Resolve for free. So. I'm going to go in, select the right parameters right here. So red, white gamut in the color space and then input gamma is going to be uh, log 3G10. And then for the output color space, we're going to do rec 709. And then in the output gamma, we're going to do Cineon. Okay. If you want to learn more about that while I'm setting everything up this way, you can check out the free training link is going to be in the description. I'm going to create a new node. I'm going to go under LUTs under film looks and I'm going to apply this one. Okay. So it's going to be the warmer version of the Fujifilm 3513 D. Okay. So this is a film print emulation. When we drop it on, it already looks pretty good, but there's some weird funky stuff happening over here with the neon lights. So to correct that, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to Check this, use custom maximum output, okay? Do 100 nits. As soon as I do that, we end up with something like that. So it looks much better. And then under saturation compression, uh, under gamut mapping method, I'm gonna turn on saturation compression. And by using these two, uh, we are looking proper, okay? So I'm gonna leave that there. Then what we're gonna do is in this node, I'm gonna go ahead and correct my image. Right now, there's a lot of red in there, okay? So let's start with our offset. And let's start pulling this down a little bit. Uh, so we are creating a cinematic look. So I'm going to leave it a little bit toward that green because uh, I like how it looks. So I'm going to keep it somewhere around here and it gives it a really nice cinematic look already. Okay. So I was just using my offset. Now what I want to do is this. I'm going to move it over to something like this and I'm going to park it somewhere around here. And I think there's just too much green in our image right now, right? Like in all this. Uh, area in the shadows, there's way too much green. So let's take that out. So I'm going to go under my log and I'm just going to start pulling some of that out. So see, just by bringing down, adding a little bit of magenta, I was able to pull that out. So now if we go back to our first frame, it's looking a lot nicer. Okay. So at this point, what I want to do is I want to go under my printer lights and start adding a little bit of a cinematic look, right? So let's start giving it some sort of a look. So I'm going to pull out uh, some yellow. And then at that point, what I want to do is I want to add some green and then I want to add some cyan. Okay. So it gives it a really, really cool look. Now, if it's a bit much, you can mess around with some other parameters to see what happens. But let's just say if I want to leave it like this. And then what I want to do is I want to create a new node. And what I want to do is I don't like how after the Cineon conversion, it kind of nerfed our highlights. So I want to grab my highlights and I want to pull them up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go under my lock controls. I'm going to take my highlights and I'm, I'm going to start cranking it up. I'm literally looking at my scopes right now and kind of cranking it up. Not too much, right? So like even something like this, and if I do before and after, even something like that. So if I do before and after, you see like how the colors just pop on a shirt, like all the highlights look so much better and just adds that three dimension to our image without blowing anything out. So I'm going to leave that there. And now I'm going to go back. And what do we want to do at this point? <clears throat> do we want to make any changes to our image so we can go back <clears throat> in our log and we can start adding maybe a little bit more magenta and then kind of pull it back. And then what we can try to do is go under my lift and kind of pull it down, not too much, right? So I can pull it down somewhere around here and park it right there. And now if we go through our shot, Just look at how cool it looks like we have the right amount of warmth. Everything looks really good. I mean, to be honest with you, it's a very natural looking image. 
I wouldn't change much. Um, what I would do is, again, I would just like go under my shadows in my log wheels and pull up my reds just a tiny bit. And now let's go back to our first frame and see how it looks. I think it helps, right? Like it brought out his skin too. And yet we still have that cyan that we added in our image. So overall, it's looking really good because if I go to my Rec 709, so this is my Rec 709, and then this is my cinematic look that I created. Now, I personally feel like the contrast still needs some work. I feel like it's just, it's floating somewhere in the middle. So I will go in and start cranking it too far and then kind of pull it back. Right, so even something like this, to me, I feel like every color kind of pops uh, when we go there, right? So like, even if we just look at what's happening here, so like when we get to our dude right here, I feel like this contrast changes that I made um, are welcomed because once again, this is our Rec 709, this is our log, Rec 709, and then this is the look that we created. It's a very, very cool look. Um, like, look at it, right? Like every color is there, right? Like we have so many different. And then at this point, what I would do is shift S and then I'm going to type in grain and I'm going to drop on 35 millimeter 400T, so it's not over the top, but it's just the right amount to give us that film look. So check it out, Rec 709, the film look. Look how clean this is, yet it has so much flavor, right? And it was built on the film print emulation that we used, but we still had to do bunch of jiggery pokery to like really dial everything in to our liking. So hopefully the lesson that you got out of this is there's never going to be one size fits all, but if you commit to going with a certain film look, you can build the look DNA on top of it by throwing your own flair uh, to give it a unique look. And if you guys like what you saw here, then I highly recommend you guys checking out my free training. Um, just look at all the things that are covered here. Plus you get tons of freebies, practice footage, power grades, and LUTs created by me. All of that is included um, without any strings attached. Link is in the description, so at least check it out. Um, sign up, watch the training, and drop a comment below. Let me know if you have any content suggestions. If you're enjoying the content, do me a favor, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel for more awesomeness. I will see you guys in the next video.